Now, full disclosure, so if it's all of you joining us for the first time, the questions we're going to start to go over today, they've had a little bit of a sneak peek. I, I sent them some of the questions, five thought starters for them. Now, notice I called them thought starters because it's just that. Now, some of these questions are going to be a little bit sprung on them because I want them to think on their toes a little bit, right? We don't want them to always be like, well, my answer to number three is B. Yes. No, no, no. I want you to think a little bit. So, ladies, if you don't mind, the first question that, that is the lowest hanging fruit about this, this panel about brand is what does your brand, when someone says, what is your brand, what does that mean to you? And Laura, we'll start right over on the end. What is your brand? Brand, I think it's everything visual about your brand, your style, the way it looks, the way you represent yourself, I think is really important with social media. How do you fit with your brand? How does your personality show in your brand? I think, you know, years ago, brand was just essentially a visual style, but I think more and more it's about personality now as well. Absolutely. Lindsay. Yeah, so as I think about that question, I remember that I would take classes about branding and it was always logo and your color choice. And I think, even though you're saying it used to be about style, I think most photographers don't realize how important that is about brand. I think they get really stuck on what does my website look like? What do my business cards look like? So um, I think style leads the way. And yeah, I mean, personality, especially for both of us, becomes essential in how we promote ourselves. Absolutely. Vanessa? I think there are two different aspects to brand. There's what your photography style is, and there's how you portray the photography style. So for example, when I first started out, I remember that I thought my photos were not good enough to be on white and that I could only put them on black backgrounds because it, it helped hide how bad I was, in my opinion, <laughs> anyway. But brand, it's a, it's a combination of both. So I recently rebranded my business and we started off with the woman who was helping me talking about my personality first. And instead of thinking about the logos first, she went with personality and she said, you know, I think you're very calming but authoritative. So we went with blue because different colors do have a different psychology attached to them. So it, it's everything all at once. And then we have the added either benefit or detriment of matching our photography style to whatever brand and personality we decide on. I, so I was going to ask both of you two. Um, one of the things that I struggled with trying to be a commercial photographer is you have to figure out your style and your brand. And so I actually, at some point, hired somebody. And it sounds like you did this too, did. to help me go through that. So like, I wanted to hear your experience. Basically, the person, for me, they did an interview about my personality, the things that I value. Um, like, it was so, like, they would even ask me questions about my childhood and the things I do for fun. And there were two parts. It was your emotional brand and your physical brand. And so we figured out, who are you as a person? How does that match up to the visuals you're attracted to? And how do you marry the two together? So you did that? I did exactly that. They didn't ask me about my childhood, thank God, because I feel like that would have gone wrong. <laughs> That's deep. That's a deep brand. I, I also think, how many of you have worked with or gone to a meeting with a client and they've said that they've followed you on Instagram or they're following you on Instagram? So I feel like people use Instagram and social media to find more about you as a photographer. And a lot of my commercial clients will say to me, I just want to know that you're easy to work with and that, you know, you're a cool person. If we're spending this week on set together or these two days on set together. So a lot of social media is about that personality. And then it, also it makes you memorable. So when I go to see a client, a lot of the time they'll say, I see you in your work. And to me, that makes you memorable. So thinking about... How, when you're finding your style, that's something that I think you'll agree you'll come across. The more you discover your style, the more you kind of find out more about yourself, and the two things kind of fit together. But yes, I, I, I want to hire someone now to help me find that. Oh, you got it. You got Just it. note that when you go have your Q&A letter, she's looking for someone, right? Here's your first job if you're branding, okay. right? Now, what's, what's interesting is that if you think back to uh, not too far to those MySpace days when you could you know, go in an HTML code and actually create your own Instagram, we don't have as much of a flexibility on that type of social media, but I noticed you all mentioned it. What are some things that you might be doing? And I'll give a, of an example so you can't use the example. Like Vanessa likes to add that swipe to a next screen where she shows her metadata of what she shot and how she got the shot. What are some things that you might be doing on social media, specifically Instagram, because it is a visual platform, to maybe brand that? social channel 
I can, I can speak yeah, to this. So it's a little bit recent. So if you go to my Instagram right now, Vanessa Joy, you will notice I'm doing things in color codes of grids. So right now, I believe we're on blues, but we were on whites before that and browns before that. I think the other picture that I have um, on the screen, not the one here showing my embarrassing logos, which there it is. All right, so then we've got like pinks and, because here's the thing, we're photographers. We love all the colors usually, and we want to photograph them. But if you throw them all onto an Instagram page without any rhyme or reason, it just looks like unicorn vomit and it's not branded and it's not <laughs> concise. So we have to organize a little bit and I think that helps. Um, I think for my Instagram, it's about having, I do everything in threes. Um, if some of you follow me on Instagram, I've got like three black and whites, three colors, three behind the scenes. So a consistent channel is really important because not only is it about your visual style and your portfolio, but having that visual memorable style on Instagram, it makes people want to look. It makes people want to know more about you. Um, I don't technically shoot for my Instagram, so I don't pay so much attention to like who's looking at what. For me, it's more about the feedback of my clients. I'm shooting for my clients. But I do like to kind of, you know, a lot of my clients follow me on Instagram. So I want to impress them. I want to be memorable. So that's the way that I do that. And part of my approach is we've already mentioned that part of your brand is your personality. So I actually do pretty in-depth captions. And in it, I'm trying to show my creative thought process. If I had some problem solving, what inspired me so that they feel like they know me a little bit better. Because if there's two photographers, me up against somebody else, but they feel a little bit more personal connection to me, that might be just that little bit extra that I need to get the phone call. All three of you educate on a regular basis in addition to being a photographer, right? And, and we work together, Laura, Laura, I'm sure we will, right? Uh, but through doing this, you start to wear a different hat, right? Do you find that in your branding of your business, you found that there's a parallel, you brand them both similarly, you start to brand them different. I know you have your workshop series. Like, how do you find that you say, okay, I need to, this is now important enough, I need to split this off. So if someone's out there and saying, I do this nine to five, but hey, I'm finding a little more success there. When do they split off their business and maybe co-brand or brand something different? Or do they run them simultaneously just because it is your name as your name? What do you find maybe importance is one way or the other? Um, I treat them as two sides to the same coin. I really treat them the same. I think part of how I see my photographic style is it's clean, strong, bold, graphic. Uh, it's powerful. The way that I portray women is strong and elegant. And that's what I try to do with my teaching. I try to empower people. I try to make them feel strong. I try to help them be creative. So it's the same for me. But I'll also say, I don't know if either of you have had this experience, but I've gotten commercial work somehow tied back into my teaching work. Uh, I just did a campaign for a big beauty brand and I had worked with the producer on a teaching job. And so when she moved over, got a new job at this beauty brand, she recommended me to the creative directors. So I know that nowadays you are your brand. And so it, you never know where that job is going to come from. And I think, what is your brand story? So, you know, you can exist as a commercial photographer and an educator. I, you know, have been teaching for eight, 10 years, something like that now. And I feel like that's part of my story, you know, part of my story. And I think similar with Lindsay and Vanessa is, you know, we probably were frustrated with learning when we started. So we want to give a little bit back. And that's part of, you know, what we're about and our brand's about. So I would say when it comes to branding your business, obviously, if you do kids and fashion, you want to separate those. But if you're an educator and a commercial photographer, both can exist at the same time. And you also see all those people uh, now doing like the mastered classes. So you see the super famous directors now teaching and the super, super famous whoever. So it's not, I, I feel like it used to be maybe a little bit scoffed at, but it's, I don't think it is at all anymore. I was just going to add to yours because I want to twist it in a way that's a little bit more relatable to all of you that a lot of photographers I find struggle with. Well, I do weddings and I do families. Should I have one brand or should I have separate brands? And I think the way that you need to figure that out is will one client demographic enjoy and relate to both or will they not? If they one will not relate to the other, so in my opinion, my couples will not relate to me posting photos of families. Because when you're 
childless and getting married, you think children are annoying and they shouldn't be in restaurants or on planes, right? So you'll notice I barely even show my children on my, my Instagram because I, I know that. So that's the way to think about it. That's great. We're going to use that. We're taping this. It's awesome. So what's, what's also very interesting is that all of you uh, were very successful with, as you all have noted, not maybe the best logos or things like that as well. Uh, is it really that important? Both of you went through paid redesigns. We're here without your designers here. We won't show them this part of the tape. Is there a huge benefit do you find after paying for a rebrand or after paying for just a branding in general, is there benefit from that that you're actually seeing in an ROI? Or is it, yeah, it's nice to have, but I'm going to do it when I have a nice capital behind me and I've earned some money? I say it's worth it 100% because as much as I'm a visual person and a creative person, I am not good at branding myself when it comes to the graphic design, but I need to see how other people see me and not just how I see myself because it can be very, very different. Um, if they want to put up the photos of all of my logos throughout the years, uh, I I did have someone do all of them, and there's no way that I would have been able to do them myself. And it wasn't until I paid a rather large amount of money for the, the last one on the bottom, which is where my brand is now and currently converting, that I have felt as prestigious and proud of my brand. The other logos I, I liked, but I didn't feel as strongly about them until I paid someone. And that's probably because they were very good at what they did. You know what I'm thinking? Lindsay and Vanessa and, and my logo are actually very similar. And it's funny because I I'm feel like trends in design have also changed. Like my husband's an art director in design. And he also said to me, it's about keeping it simple. It's not about having your logo overtake your brand. It's not, you know, I used to have a website, I don't know if you were the same, with flash with butterflies. And like, you know, all these crazy things, because in a way I was kind of a little insecure about my work. So I felt like having this design on my website made me feel more professional. But my website now is, I, I use Squarespace and it's just completely white and it's just to the point because in the commercial industry, no one has time anymore. So, you know, work first and then everything else second, I think. So about once a year, I pay to go to these events where you sit down with different art directors and they'll give you feedback pretty much on whatever you want. You can show them your portfolio, your website, and resoundingly, the more boring the presentation, the better, because then your work is showing through. And they don't want anything difficult to try to get through, to navigate. To, like I have a section on my website called Skin. So if a client is interested in skin, they don't have to try to find where there's pictures that look good. Like they click on that button. I make it as easy and as possible. So you can guarantee someone will still email and you go, have you got evidence of beauty work? Yeah. They no, still. all the time. Or can you do X, Y, Z? And you're like, yeah. I don't think right anyone there. will email as well spoken as what you just said. <laughs> do you have evidence of, oh, that's so amazing. No email reads like that. Do you have evidence of beauty work? That's awesome. Yes, you are right. She is the most well spoken that will ever hit this stage. Yes. Okay, so this one is this one's this one's the banger. We talked about this. One piece of business advice that you would give right now if you were sitting in the audience, but here's the catch, not when you started photography, you're your age, you have the the, the relationships, the families, the loved ones the, that you have right now, but you're doing another job and you're saying, "You know what? I want to become a photographer today." What's the advice you give yourself right now to suddenly switch gears? Uh, I can definitely do this. I find that this is a lost art in many photographers today because we think that it is a quick switch and it's, okay, I want to be a photographer, so I am guess I'm going to get a camera and start my own business. No, 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 no. What I suggest you do, keep that day job and then work for as many different photographers that you possibly can. Assist for them, learn from them, shoot for them if they let you, whatever you can do to add to not only your education, but your income in photography. I worked for a photographer for five years before I started my own business, and it is really wonderful making mistakes on their dollar rather than yours. Absolutely, 100%.
And because how many people would want to get on an airplane? I said this yesterday's panel. How many people want to get an airplane when the pilot says, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard our flight to Los Angeles. Today, flying back, we're actually going to fly back at 45 degrees left just because we can. I want to see what it's like. Uh, it'll be pretty cool. Don't worry. We're going to get there safely. No, we would. But as photographers, we try that on the set all the time in front of our clients. Uh, actually, I just want to try this a little bit different. You know, try your things in a studio when you have your non-paid clients. But we as photographers, now, troubleshooting is different, right? That's different. But get that knowledge in advance working for someone else so that you see how they troubleshoot and get through that so that when you're experiencing that, you're not just trying it, right? I, I'm going to half answer your question and half answer a question that I want to answer. <laughs> um, all right, so one piece of advice that I would give people is a little bit more of an emotional piece of advice. Because I'm thinking if I'm there right now and just starting, we put a lot of weight, I think most of us do, on social media. And people are awful, <laughs> OK? Um, you, will you will absolutely run into people that are going to troll you or not like your work or just add their two cents when you didn't ask for it. Um, I think the piece of advice I would give you is when you figure out your own voice and your own style and you regularly produce and you create a brand and you put it out there, you will begin to attract the people that love what you do. And so when you first start out, it's just random people. And so it's going to be a lot of noise. And some will be good, some will be bad. Um, and I think part of the reason I have such good feedback on my social is because the people who like my work follow me. The people who don't, don't. But they know what to expect, because they know what my vision is. And the second someone is mean to me, I delete and block. You have to. You just have to get rid of those Preach. people <laughs> instantly. So like, bye. Yeah, no. I, I, it, usually I write out a comment. I look at it, I breathe, and then I delete it and block them. <laughs> Going off a little bit of Lindsay said about shooting what you like, and I think that's, especially when you're kind of starting out, trying to find your style through a lot of experimentation, personal work, which is what I'm talking about on my talk later. Shoot as much for yourself as possible, because that will help you identify your style, because that will also then help you with your business path of knowing who to reach out to. Because you need to find that style to know, OK, who are the target clients that I could be reaching out to? And you only know that when you have a specific style to show. So if you're shooting beauty, you've got your top 50 beauty clients in the US to reach out for. But which ones are shooting my kind of style now? So that's something to think about. Yeah. yeah I, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, every January, I set aside time. And I make, literally, like, this is cracking me up. I literally make a list of my 50 dream clients. And then I mark the ones, like I separate them out. These ones need my help. Like I think I could help them be better. These ones are a little bit of a reach. These ones are my perfect style. And so I separate them out so I know what my messaging is to them. And 50 is manageable. Like it's, it's a lot, but it's also not aiming for just like three, where if you don't hit it, then you're kind of in trouble at the end of the day, so. And, and wouldn't you agree if you get like one reply from those emails you're sending from your dream clients, that's the goal. You could send 100 emails and you get one client that books. And that's the goal, especially in commercial photography, isn't Absolutely. it? Yep. And that's why brand is important. Because again, the first thing that they see is that first interaction of you. And then what are they going to do? They're going to click the social link on there. They're going to start seeing your social media. They're going to start seeing the time that you put into that effort. So absolutely important. I know you all have lots of questions, so I actually am going to use the remainder of this time so that the three of them can be at the front of the stage to answer your questions individually. So Laura will be to the front of the stage over here to your left. Lindsay will be at the center of the stage. And Vanessa will be to the right, to your right, our stage left over here. Thank you all so much. Thank you to the three of them. Give a round of applause. And then again, your questions can be answered individually at the front of the stage. Thank you. Stick around.